Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Wendy and this channel is about plus size fashion and also my fitness journey. So I'm glad to see you here and what I wanted to share with you today are just a couple of things that I have been incorporating for my fitness journey since the beginning of January. So since the beginning of January, I shared with you that I was going to start a fitness journey and I am completely motivated because I'm two months in and I'm doing really well and I just wanted to share with you some of the changes that I have made since last year. So I'm going to give you a countdown of like my top six things that I have done. So let's get to the video. So item number one, things that I have incorporated over the last two months and that has been not eating out. You know, honestly, from previous years, I eat out quite a bit because on it, sometimes I don't want to cook, I don't want to deal with the hassle of cleaning up or anything. So I made a deal with my husband. I said, you know what, I will make all the food as long as you clean up. And it's actually been working out pretty well. So out of these last two months, from the beginning of January through the end of February, I have only eaten out one time. And the only reason why I ate out that one time was because I was on an overnight trip for work. So because of that, unfortunately, I didn't have like a microwave in my hotel room in order for me to heat up my food. So I ended up getting something at the restaurant downstairs and I made sure that I kept it in within my calorie range that I have prepared for myself. So I prepare my meals. I try to do at least two to three days at a time because I wish I could be that person that ate the same thing over and over and over on a daily basis and just be happy with that. And unfortunately, I'm not that way. My husband's not that way. So to make it easy on us, I cook for about two days or three days at a time. And then from there, I make sure that I prepare the meals throughout the week and including weekends. So our weekends have gotten a little stale as far as not enjoying restaurants. But the reason why we're doing this is because I have a goal that I want to meet and he has a goal that he wants to meet. So that is one of the reasons why we cook at home. I make sure that I have my breakfast. He makes his own breakfasts, but lunch and dinner, I make sure that I prepare those and have a couple options because it's not just this is what I'm going to eat, I'm going to stick to it. I make sure that I have a couple options available for me or I have cooked all my protein and then from there I could just kind of put the sides together to make sure that I am eating uh, within my caloric deficit that I put myself in. So number one is no eating out. So that was one of the big changes for me and it's been, it was difficult at first but now, you know what, I am actually not craving any of the foods because I have figured out how to make low calorie meals with the type of foods that I love, whether it's pizza, hamburgers, um, pasta, and so on, that I've made low calorie meals that kind of replaces that. I know some of them aren't as creamy as some of the restaurant quality because by all means, I am not a chef. And as long as there is a good recipe that I could follow, I will follow that to the T. And honestly, a lot of people on whether it's YouTube or TikTok have made great recipes that I've been able to copy and try and they actually turn out pretty good. And I, I'm not a good plate setter, so you know when it comes to setting the plate up, as long as it tastes good, that's my main thing. And so I make sure that I eat at home 100% of the time, honestly. And some of them are prepared meals already that I might purchase from the supermarket. When I say prepared, I mean like the chicken might already have been uh, grilled in a package, so I don't have to do that. And that's one of the big things that has helped me. Item number two that has helped me stay within my calories. 
As I said, is that I am in a, a calorie deficit. I made sure that I went to a couple calculators online to put in my height, my weight, my age, and try to determine what my resting calories would be as far as how much energy my body needs. So what I did is I subtracted about 500 from that and that's where I am currently at. So I want to make sure that I keep a realistic goal. I am not one of those individuals that is going to eat 1200 calories and be happy because honestly I do not have a good relationship with food. Food has always been comfort for me so by making sure that I'm able to cook all my meals and I'm able to log them in to a app then I know that I'm staying within my caloric deficit. So the app that I use is called Lose It. I know that a lot of people use like MyFitnessPal or whatnot, but I think that Lose It has more options, free options, because it is a free tool to use in order for me to keep within my caloric deficit and how much calories I want to take in. You know, my big goal is not only to be in a calorie deficit, but also to make sure that I get the um, appropriate protein amount. I have a, a coach that I'm working with that he basically told me, hey, try to stay within this many um, pro, uh, protein grams each day in order for you to make sure that you maintain your muscle. And that's one of the big things that I want to do. Number three is mobility or walking. Last month I showed you that I was going to walk 10,000 steps for two whole weeks. And honestly, that really changed the way I looked about moving. The reason why it did that is because I was looking at my phone and, you know, I have an iWatch. You know, that's one thing that keeps track of my steps like a pedometer. And if you have your phone on you, a lot of the phones have an app where it tracks your steps. But the thing is, is that my iWatch tells me when I'm not moving. If I spend a whole hour and I'm just sitting there doing nothing, it tells me get up. And lately this year, that if my wristwatch tells me that, I make sure that I get up, stretch, um, go get some water, move around just to make sure that I am keeping mobile. In addition to that, during my breaks, my lunch, during the work week, I make sure that I go outside. You know, whether it's for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, a half an hour, I try to get my steps in. And I have actually been doing pretty good. Do I have I done that every single day? No, but the majority of my days that um, I had in January and also in the month of February, I got anywhere between 7,000 to 10,000 steps a day. And I'm really happy with that because I feel different. You know, one thing about being outside and being able to see sunlight during the day instead of just being in artificial light all day in an office or staying locked up in a room if you work from home, it's very different and it changes your attitude and it actually makes you a little happier because you get that vitamin D from the sun and you get out there, you get moving, and you do something for your body and your body will appreciate that. Item number four is sleep. So your body needs time to recover. I wish I could tell you that I go hard every day and I make sure that I just keep going and keep moving, but that's not reality. I wanna make sure that I give my, my body time to rest and I know the older I get, the harder it is to recover. And I make sure that I get at least six to eight hours of sleep a night. I'm closer to eight because I try to go to sleep early. However, I do wake up pretty early. Even on weekends, I don't stay up late. I've never been a drinker, so I don't really focus on drinking or, or going out to parties or stuff like that. If there's an occasion, sure, absolutely. But I was listening to this podcast and I remember one of the coaches was saying, you know, when you stay up late on weekends, you're putting your body in a jet lag similar to you traveling. 
So if you normally go to sleep at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock and you now stay up till midnight 1 or 2 during the weekend and then you sleep in late on the weekends, you're putting your body in a jet lag situation come next week. So I was just thinking about that and I was just like, you know what, that's true because that's why a lot of people wake up really groggy on Monday morning because of lack of sleep because they keep putting themselves in a jet lag situation all um, during the weekend and then come Monday, they're so tired because they didn't get their normal sleep or they just didn't get enough sleep because they just went to sleep too late. So item number five, so the month of January was just trying to get me to move. So I put myself in that situation where I told you that for two weeks I was going to walk 10,000 steps. So come February, I told myself, you know what, I don't want to just walk, I want to start incorporating weightlifting. And that is one thing that I have done. I actually do have a coach and a trainer that I see twice a week. Trainers are not cheap, I'll tell you that. I know that I'm not going to be able to keep this up long term just because of the financial situation. But when it comes to having a trainer when it comes to weightlifting, the reason why I do this is to keep myself motivated and knowing that I am going to go because I am paying for their service and I have a appointment with them on specific dates. So because of that, I know that I am going to go to those appointments. Now, do I need to have a coach? No, not at all. But I like having a coach because not only do they give me a program to, to work at because I have fitness equipment at home and I work out at home the majority of the time. So since I have a garage that has the, have this equipment, so the two days that I see my, my coach, the other days I work out at home and I'm super glad that my coach is willing to work with me and build a program not only with him but also at home. So that way I can make sure that not only I maintain muscle but I also gain muscle by doing this. As I told you, I would love to be a very strong physical person and building muscle speeds up your metabolism according to researchers why not lift weights and also you know it, it also helps for osteoporosis for older folks so I make sure that I weight lift uh, four times a week and I have two days with my coach two days at home and then I make sure on those same days that I also get my steps in I am not running at this time I think starting March I am going to start incorporating a little bit of running uh, I hate running because I'm super slow. I am like a turtle in peanut butter. So right now, all I'm doing is walking and weightlifting four days a week. And I absolutely love weightlifting. You could tell me to, you know, lift anything. I have done strongman competitions in the past, and I have also done um, CrossFit in, uh, in the past as well. But you know what? I want to make sure that I do something that's sustainable to me. So when it comes to this, I am doing four days a week of weightlifting. So the last thing that I have added is a goal for myself. You know, I told you that I was on a fitness journey, but what journey am I actually on? And my goal is to be able to run a Spartan Stadium race. Um, I am not a very good runner. I've never been a very good runner, even at my fittest. Uh, but my goal is to accomplish a Spartan race later on this year. But I think in the meantime, I am going to do like 5Ks just to get myself ready and prepared. Because at the Spartan race, not only are you running, but you're also going through obstacle course. And during those obstacle courses, the one thing that I'm glad the stadiums do not have is the mud that you have to run yourself in. Because to me, I, I always think the worst thing that's going to happen when you jump into mud and you're going to get some sort of brain-eating aneba or something like that. So what I am doing is a obstacle course and it has like a three-mile run, a lot of stairs 
years, so I want to make sure that I prepare myself for that. That is my ultimate goal, but in the meantime, my goal is to run a 5K. And when I say run, technically I mean jog. I'm not trying to win the race or anything, I just want to complete it. So starting in the month of March, my main thing is to start running, not just walking. And slowly but surely, you know, continue to uh, progress when it comes to that. But ultimately, I decided to put a goal at the end so I have something to work for. So I hope that you will tell me what type of fitness journey you may be on or what type of things you may be interested in seeing on this channel when it comes to my fitness journey. And I would really appreciate that. You know, you guys have been with me since the very beginning, and I know that you have seen me gain a little bit of weight. Uh, so what I've added here at the end uh, is a progress photo from the beginning of February to towards the end of February when it comes to my body. So you're able to see where I started, where I'm currently at. I wish I had taken a photo at the beginning of January, but I did not. So at least here you could see me from the very beginning of February all the way through the end of February. So every Sunday is when I take my photos. So as you can see, I gave you a front shot, side shot, and rear view shot. So that way you could kind of see the difference. I could kind of see it a little bit in my torso and then also the curvature of like my underbutt. I could kind of see that in the photos. So I'm very happy with that, that I am making progress. So hopefully in the next few months, I'll make more progress. And I'm super excited about our journey together. You know, I think a lot of the times we get so stuck on certain foods that we have to eat, you know, just stick to, you know, chicken and vegetables, that's it. But in the past, I know that hasn't worked for me and I'm trying to do something that I am able to maintain. And that ultimately is my goal, is to stay within my calories and then just eat the target amount of protein each day. Overall, since the beginning of January, I have lost a total of 15 pounds, which I told you it wasn't my main goal, but losing 15 pounds is 15 pounds that I lost and I was actually pretty amazed that I lost it pretty quickly in the two months because I'm not one that drops weight very quickly and my goal is not to just lose a whole bunch of weight all at one time. I want to make sure it's sustainable to me and that is my main goal. So thank you for joining me on this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. So stay stylish my friends.